This video will explain the installation procedures for the specialty products company Easy Shim Dual Contact Shim. This two-piece shim is designed to correct rear camber and toe at the same time. All Easy Shim part numbers are similar in design and installation procedures. These shims will cover most shim applications. When alignment readings indicate a camber and or toe correction is necessary, check the application chart to determine the correct shim needed. On this 1997 Chevrolet Venture, we will illustrate the installation of the 75800 red shim. Before beginning shim installation, check to make sure that there is not already a shim installed in the vehicle. If a shim is present, it will need to be removed and new base alignment readings will need to be taken. When using the instruction chart included in the shim, first determine the amount of camber and or toe change needed and whether that change is in the positive or negative direction. On the left side of the chart, select the proper column for toe change. There are four columns depending on how the alignment equipment is displaying toe. Make sure to select the proper column. Select the amount of positive or negative toe change desired. Now select the amount of positive or negative camber change desired from the top of the chart. Where the two columns intersect is the proper number combination to achieve the desired correction. If the columns intersect on a blank space, it may be necessary to alter the amount of change. Remember that toe is more important than camber when aligning for tire wear issues. A dial chart is also available to help select the proper number combination. Some alignment equipment may have software programs that will help determine the proper number selection along with other valuable information on installing all types of rear camber toe shims. In this particular case, 38 over 6 will give us the proper correction. It does not matter which number is on top and which number is on the bottom as long as those two numbers are aligned with each other on the shim. Line the two numbers up and mark this as the top of the shim. Use the template on the back of the instruction sheet or the template on the alignment equipment screen and mark the shaded areas that will need to be removed for the rear hub bolts. The top shaded area may not need to be removed, so fit the shim before cutting this portion out. It is recommended that special cutters be used to cut the shim. The use of these small cutters will help keep the shim from breaking through. Clip the areas to be removed from the inside of the shim while holding the outer portion firmly, then remove the material. The shim is now ready to be fitted on the rear hub. Raise the vehicle and support it securely. Remove the alignment equipment along with the wheel assembly. Now remove the brake drum. Remove the four bolts holding the hub and brake assembly to the axle. Support the hub assembly with a jack stand or strap. Remove clips or retainers on the brake line, park brake cable, or ABS wiring in order to gain access to the rear axle flange and hub. Carefully disconnect the ABS wiring if necessary. Clean the hub and flange thoroughly of all rust and debris. Dirt or debris left on the hub can cause incorrect readings. Fit the shim on both the hub and the axle flange. Make sure it fits flush against both. Since we are working on the right side of the vehicle, the numbers on the shim will face towards the installer. On the left side, or driver's side of the vehicle, the numbers on the shim should face away from the installer to give correct change. If trimming of the shim is required for brake line or other obstacles, a quick and easy way is to use a bench grinder. With this process, the shim can be shaped to fit around the obstacle without having to cut through the shim.
After making sure the shim fits properly, install the shim on the hub. Carefully reconnect the ABS wiring if necessary. Mount the hub on the axle and install the four hub retaining bolts. Make sure the shim fits properly around the hub. Tighten the hub bolts in a cross pattern evenly. Torque the hub bolts to the proper specification in an even pattern. Proper tightening of the hub bolts will help attain proper alignment readings. Reconnect any brake line or wiring clips that were loosened earlier. Install the brake drum. Check to make sure the shim is located properly. Reinstall wheel, reinstall alignment equipment and recompensate, and then lower vehicle. Check the alignment readings. They should now be close to the desired amount of correction. Adjust front alignment angles if necessary and road test vehicle. Certain vehicles with rear disc brakes may require caliper spacer shims to align the caliper to the brake rotor. The 75970 kit comes with two each of four different thickness spacers to mount the caliper correctly. Also, if hub retaining bolts are not long enough, the 10408 bolt kit includes longer bolts for specific applications.